Hello again, this is John, and what I have in front of me here now is a FAF 130. This is a, uh, they call it a 130-6, and uh, here's here's the manual for it. As you can see there, it says FAF 130-6, and I picked this up at a thrift store, and uh, I don't know if you can tell, on the back it's got a the what they call an automatic attachment which uh, allows you to do decorative stitching in addition to the standard zigzag that this machine does. So we'll go around the front here. Uh, we'll start at the left. This is uh, the upper thread tension dial and behind the thread tension dial is uh, this little lever that swings back and forth and in the booklet they tell you uh, that this is used for darning and embroidering and in one setting is uh, gives a little lighter tension on the upper thread uh, which is up like this and if you flip it down a ways it's the normal setting and if you go all the way they say that this is for uh, heavy material and this has little indicators on it, L for light or loose and it's F on the other end of it which stands for fast and they say fast or heavy or tight. So I run that about just somewhere in the middle. Next thing we come to is this uh, the main dial in the middle. This is a zigzag width indicator or selector. <coughs> and this has a couple extra knobs on it that uh, relate to the attachment on the back. The bottom button, you lift that out of the slot and then it uh, engages with this post that comes forward from the back. See now it's connected with that uh, the shaft that goes back to the this box in the back and when you have this engaged you're supposed to turn this little knob in which brings the pointer away from the backing plate and the reason for that is the pointer has a little protrusion on the back side of it that uh, you can see little notches along this bar so when this is in the upper position, those little that little protrusion engages with those slots. So we don't want to overcome that friction when we're using this attachment. So they tell you to screw that out. So to use just the regular zigzag you pull the button out and engage the little pin in the slot there and that disengages it from the arm in the back so then you can just swing that wherever you'd like and then we turn this back out and it allows the pointer to go back against the plate and then it clicks into some slots in this bar and all this bar is is a, a fine adjustment So when this is locked into one of those slots, you can adjust this to in uh, fine increments. But that only works when this lever on the side, which I'll get to in a minute, is all the way up. And that brings us to the lever. This is for uh, left sewing, center sewing, or right sewing on the needle. So in this position, you may not be able to see that, but the needle is all the way to the left. If you push this lever back and pull down on it, now the, le now the needle is all the way to the right. And incidentally, it disengages the little protrusion on this arrow with those slots so it, this only works if this gizmo is all the way up 
or at some point in the middle slot. So this has an upper, which is left, middle, which is center, and then all the way down is right. So standard 130 that does not have the attachment on the back won't have this arm coming forward, won't have this little button on the bottom, and it won't have this uh, screw on the top. But it'll have this and this. Next thing we have is the thread holder. Uh, it's got the machine has two standard posts on it, but then on the top of this one is mounted this uh, extra little piece that takes this long arm, and you stick that through a bob or a, a spool of thread, and put it in there, and that holds the thread on the machine. I presume so if you're transporting it or something, the, the, the uh, spool won't fall off. So the next thing we have here is the stitch length lever. And right now I have it adjusted down to about one and a half. But if you turn this knob out, you can go all the way to reverse and all the way to fold forward. And then there's zero in the middle where the feed dogs don't move at all. And that brings us down to this knob. If you turn it one direction, if you turn it clockwise, it drops the feed dogs down so they don't operate when you're uh, sewing. You use that when you're darning or possibly embroidering. So we turn it counterclockwise and the feed dogs are now engaged again. This little deal here is friction discs and it's if you want to wind the bobbin. You run the thread down through that and then up to the bobbin. Once you get it started, you push the little lever down and start the machine and you wind your bobbin that way. And then when it gets full, this arm pushes back from the filled up bobbin and disengages the wheel from the hand wheel. So this uh, sewing machine, I got the instruction book. I also got the certificate of lifetime guarantee dated January 21st, 1956. And I uh, got a couple other little booklets that have to do with the automatic attachment on the back. And they all came in this nice little sheath. I also got a set of attachments that came with it. It says FAF on the, on the box. A couple interesting items out of that box is uh, I, I pulled this out and I didn't know what it was. And it, it came with this blade and a little wider blade. Well come to find out this is for after you make a buttonhole you use this knife to cut through the center part of the buttonhole to open it up. Another thing I got was uh, <coughs> a darning foot which I'm always eager to get. It's kinda cool. A lot of machines I buy don't don't come with a darning foot. In fact, hardly any of them do. Alright, we're at the back of the machine right now and I wanted to show the uh, the automatic attachment. It's a little dusty at the moment but uh, this has two levers uh, an A lever and a B lever. A lever selects which of the six cams uh, it will be using when you do have it all engaged. Right now you can see a little finger poking out that uh, will ride along this outside cam, which is cam number one. You flip this, and then a second finger rotates around, and that rides on cam two. You flip it again, and it rides, the third finger comes out, rides on cam three, 
CAM4, CAM5, and CAM6. And then you go back to CAM1 again. So it just does that cycle over and over. This is lever B, and it has a zero position and then a one, two, and a three position. Zero position holds this linkage up, which has this pin protruding through it. And so nothing will happen when the sewing machine is running when it's in position zero. You move it to position one, and this pin goes up and down for every rotation of the hand wheel and it uh, has a linkage that goes over and turns the cam stack so every time you turn the wheel around once the this increments forward ever so slightly if you go to position two it allows the pin to move a further distance so every time you go around it moves the cam stack a little bit further for each revolution and then you go to position three and it moves the maximum amount each time so that's how this automatic attachment works and it's got like I said before an arm that's hooked onto the bottom of this lever it goes forward and connects into the zigzag knob and so this uh, just goes back and forth uh, turning the zigzag knob depending on where the finger is on the cam and then we have the uh, this is a 1.3 amp motor and it's got the little FAF logo on top and it also says Westinghouse Electric Corp On a machine that does not have the automatic attachment, it has uh, that's where the, the light goes instead of hanging out on the side like this. It has the light back in here. So that's an, a, a difference, another difference between a standard machine and one with the attachment. The attachment comes with this light on the side. Okay, why don't we do some sewing, make sure everything is set properly here. First I'll just do a straight stitch, and this is in the, I'll just leave it there in the right position. Uh, first thing I'll do is thread the machine. Most machines thread, old well, vintage machines like this, they, uh, most of them thread the same way. Uh, some of them may not have little extra levers here and there or little things for the thread to go behind, but uh, first of all, you go underneath this little bar, and then up over the top of this little tension disc, down through the main tension disc around the check spring and then back down hook around this arm come back up and go through this curly Q thing here then we go up to the, <coughs> the take up lever down through this other little loop and then finally through this uh, little wire loop down here the front of the needle and then we thread the needle and we go from front to back and there we have it Okay, this is on zero. 
we are sewing in the right position. Pretty thrilling. We'll go all the way to four. Now I have this set on three, so this was moving around, but it wasn't engaged up front here, so I'll just put that back to zero so it doesn't move around. So that's the straight in the zigzag portion. Okay, we're going to use the automatic attachment now. And I've engaged the pin onto the arm down below so it's locked in with the cam stack on the back. I've uh, threaded this knob in to pull the pointer away from the backing plate so there's no friction. So that's how it works on cam 1. We'll uh, go to cam 2. That's a little bit different. It's a, it does a taper. It goes wide and then it snaps back to narrow and goes wide again. So they all pretty much do just a little bit different patterns. We'll do number five. Now if we did this on number one, the camp stack would be rotating slower. So you'd get a probably a, just a little finer. I guess we'll put it back to one and see what happens. Well, it's not finer. It's it's more drawn out, which makes sense. The cam stack goes slower so it moves this slower. So it's a, a broader pattern uh, when you're on number one than on number three. So that's uh, pretty much how a FAF 130 works. Uh, without the attachment on the back it still does straight and zigzag. And this particular one was uh, sold in 1956. So thank you for watching.